Hello, my name is Denise Wetley and I am here at Wake Tech and have been teaching physics for many, many years. <laughs> Hopefully I've gotten a lot of experience from my students as well as uh, from other faculty members, but I wanted to make a short video here for you uh, to share with you uh, when people hear the word physics a lot of times they react and sometimes they react badly uh, and they cringe right and uh, so my goal in life is uh, really to hopefully come up with ways for people to have good experiences in uh, physics uh, for taking a physics course because I, I always get uh, frustrated when uh, people say oh that was the worst experience of my life uh, so so I wanted to try to share some things that uh, might help us uh, kind of overcome that OK, so let me see if I can open up some things here for us. And give it a try. All right, so I'll see if I can share my screen. OK, all right. OK, so what I'm sharing here, all right, is uh, a uh, short PowerPoint uh, presentation on uh, why physics is hard. Uh, when people hear that and they think that's the, the first thought that comes to their mind. So I've stolen some ideas from an author uh, named Vincent Coletta, who wrote a book called Thinking in Physics. And it's kind of written uh, for instructors, but actually has some very, very good advice for students in there as well. All right, but the, the theme is how physics can develop your higher order thinking skills. Okay, let's see if I can. There we go. Okay. All right. So now first thing, okay, is uh, an idea that uh, that if you uh, can ask yourself, do you believe that intelligence is fixed by your genetics? Okay, well, if you believe that, uh, and that's a mindset that you have, uh, then you tend to perceive challenging things are too difficult to do. All right. Uh, and like I said, if this is your mindset, that does make things much more challenging than they need to be. Um, but it has turned out that uh, after studies, cognitive psychology tells us that that is not the case. All right. Our brains are plastic and everyone has the opportunity to grow and learn. Uh, for example, I don't play a musical instrument and I honestly think that is very hard. That's a hard thing to do, but I certainly admire people who can do it and do it well. Uh, but if I had the desire and the drive to want to learn, say, a new instrument, well, my brain would certainly be able to accommodate that. Uh, and I could I could learn any new thing uh, that I wanted to. But I do just have to set my mind to it that that's what I want. OK, so obviously uh, we don't want to hold on to that belief that uh, what I can do is fixed by my uh, genes. <laughs> OK. All right, but now physics is going to be a great subject in order for you to help develop your higher order thinking skills. All right, that uh, what this uh, course is, what courses in physics are going to do for you, it will give you the ability to recognize patterns. All right, it will actually give you the ability to develop strategies to organize information. Uh, and this is the training that we honestly give in Physics 251 for you. All right. It will give you the ability to solve problems and novel problems, so problems you've never seen before. And I hope that's why many of you, if you're taking physics, that if your engineering programs require it, well, this is why, okay? Uh, and uh, solving novel problems by teasing out smaller questions from the big problem. Uh, this is really what the meat of what physicists do. Uh, this is our comfort zone. <laughs> we like to pick problems apart and just do little pieces at a time and then kind of step back and look at how all these pieces kind of fit back into the big puzzle uh, and it all falls into place. Uh, definitely, it will increase your ability to focus attention to detail uh, that we always recommend that you need to read problems more than once just to make sure you haven't overlooked some detail. It will also give you the ability to use a surprising or unpredicted result to probe a little deeper. This certainly happens in labs uh, when you get uh, information out of uh, lab experiments that don't quite go with the theory. Well, then you probe a little deeper to find out, well, why did it come out that way? And, and that's a good skill. That is definitely a good skill. 
OK, and then also what physics will do for you is it'll give you the ability to communicate with others, either the question or a solution. So even just knowing how to ask a good question uh, is some training that you will definitely get out of this course. OK, but first things first, uh, what we have to uh, make sure that we can control in this in a course like this is uh, your impulse control. This is a trait that you want to try to restrain uh, because it will get in your way. All right, you, we want you to stay relaxed. We want you to stay open. All right, because here's the problem that if you keep this uh, impulsiveness with you, then and try to do things in a hurry, then you get frustrated if it doesn't come out the way you expect. All right, so the frustration and impatience usually kind of goes together and often in physics that leads to you just grabbing equations without a lot of thought as to why you're even using them and we don't want that to happen. We want you to be confident in, uh, in knowing what you're doing. So restraining the impulsiveness, stay open, stay relaxed, okay, stay calm, okay, then uh, then things will just kind of fall into place without you working very hard. Okay, and uh, and this kind of goes along with it. I thought this was a nice quote uh, that if you want to encourage students to stop and think well about a question, well, first of all, that means that we have to give you time to think, and hopefully we are designing our courses that will give you time to think through things that hopefully you're going to have assignments well enough in advance so that you can kind of plan ahead and know where things are going. Uh, but essentially impulsiveness is the enemy of deep thinking. Uh, so you don't want to have to uh, redo things just because you did it too impulsively and uh, and missed the information. OK, so here's going to be our recommendation that we're going to stay slow and steady. All right. And that approach uh, to understanding hopefully will be very successful and it is very successful for many people. And so if you take the time to figure things out until they make sense to you, that's really what's going to uh, send you a little further. And you also want to practice enough until strategies uh, become automatic. OK, uh, so in physics one, for example, uh, when you see a problem that's going to talk about forces, well, what you should automatically do before the question even asks anything is to draw what we call a free body diagram, because as soon as you can see where those forces are, everything else becomes uh, much, much easier. All right, but uh, taking time to figure things out until they make sense. Uh, if you do get stuck, which that often happens and I even get stuck on things sometimes, that's where you reach out to others and ask OK, that my best advice in physics one especially is don't stay stuck. <laughs> OK, uh, get over the little hump or just ask a simple question and that's where your training of asking good questions will come from and uh, and try to move on beyond that. OK, but again, what makes this course, what makes a physics course hard? say compared to other courses. Uh, so if this course is a little different than maybe things that you've taken before, uh, is here's what's going to be asked of you. Uh, you're going to be assessed on your understanding, uh, not just regurgitating solutions that uh, that you have seen before uh, to very specific problems that you may have memorized. And I will tell you that uh, memorization is not your best tool in a physics class. All right, you're going to use your brain bandwidth to uh, again wrap your head around these uh, concepts and and utilize them. But now pushing your thinking will make you learn more. All right, even if your test scores may not seem very high. I know that's always the focus that a lot of students have uh, with um, with taking a course and how am I doing on the tests? All right, so I want to kind of encourage you not to have so much test anxiety that that puts up a wall. Uh, that you know you're telling yourself, well, this is going to be hard. I'm going to screw it up. Well, then you will. <laughs> All right. So again, if you can stay calm, don't let test scores discourage you. Uh, and especially in physics, one concept usually builds on another. So if by say test one, you have really kind of screwed up uh, vector addition. Well, by test two, you will be better at it because you're going to keep using it. OK. Uh, so so as long as you're making improvements, that's just as important as um, a single test scores. 
All right. And uh, for the most part in these courses, you're going to have many more opportunities to show what you know and what you can do other than just tests. OK, so the, the percentage of the course is not going to be weighted incredibly heavy on just test scores. OK, but hopefully again, if you can teach yourself to remain calm, do some deep, deep breathing exercises, that sort of thing, uh, then hopefully test anxiety will be a thing of a past uh, for you, uh, because I usually find that's where students uh, when they start stressing about things, that's where they start making more mistakes and even silly mistakes. So you want to try to avoid that. All right, and now with all this training uh, that the benefits of improving your higher order thinking skills, they've even done, shown brain scans of which parts of the brain light up when you do certain tasks, uh, that it has been found that uh, these kinds of higher order thinking skills do carry over to other things you do in your math, your English, biology, engineering, uh, any of the other things you do. In other words, you're going to become a good problem solver no matter the subject <laughs> that the problem is in. Uh, maybe it's even just um, figuring out, well, how am I going to juggle, you know, a job and um, and getting to appointments on a certain day? Your brain is plastic enough that if you've trained it, it's going to look at those kind of tasks even easier. Uh, it improves your working memory uh, capacity uh, by doing this. Uh, it gives you what they call fluid intelligence or flexible thinking. So even if you memorize a fact, which again, I'm not going to encourage memorization, but if you know a fact, uh, then hopefully you're going to recognize when you can apply it to different contexts um, and, and make it work. OK, you're going to also uh, give you a, a good workout here, uh, but it'll provide you continuous mental conditioning. <laughs> OK, so it's like your uh, your intelligence calisthenics. Uh, so you're going to physics will give you a good work out there. OK, but again, don't fight that. Uh, I know if you say, well, that's really hard. But again, if you do work out and exercise, you know that good feeling you get after you've exercised uh, that it you know gets all those uh, blood circulating and that sort of thing. So it's very similar here when you really nail some of these ideas uh, in this kind of a course, you feel so much better. OK, so don't fight it. OK, go with it. And obviously that's uh, probably why you're pursuing courses uh, in science or math is that uh, these higher order thinking skills practice is preparing you for these more demanding and I'm sure you're aware uh, the higher paying jobs because it does demand more. OK, but that's uh, that's hopefully your goal. OK, and then just to kind of send you off here uh, that uh, found a few YouTube links that I hope you can copy these easily. Otherwise, I might find another way to share them. Uh, with you, uh, but uh, but what I thought were some fun uh, uh, videos that uh, can kind of inspire you a little bit that anybody can do this um, then and they, these people kind of show. Okay. All right, so I hope this uh, this has been useful for you and uh, feel free to contact me at Wake Tech if you like uh, Denise Wetley at in the physics area and I'll be happy to uh, answer any questions you may have. Okay, good luck to you.